Hey guys, Ernie here and welcome to the Paleo Hiker MD channel. Are you looking at maybe starting to get outdoors and practicing a little bit of what they call bushcraft? Just taking things in nature and trying to build things from them, building shelters, building fires, getting to know nature a little bit better. Well, there are some basic things that you're going to need and I want to talk to you guys about basic bushcraft gear, my basic five C's of bushcraft. So stay tuned, we'll talk about it. Thanks for watching guys. Dave Canterbury, a very popular YouTuber, outdoorsman. He is uh, the founder of the Pathfinder School. He also has a website called Self-Reliance Outfitters. That's all his stuff. He wrote several books that I've talked about here on the channel before about bushcraft. I highly recommend you guys checking them out. Well, he talks about the five C's of bushcraft. Cutting, cover, containers, cordage, and combustion. These are items that you could potentially make out in the woods. You could make cover or, or you can make a fire by rubbing two sticks together. But in a situation where you're trying to make things a little easier or in a survival situation in particular, you want these things readily available. It's hard to create them on your own out in nature. So having this equipment is very important. It's kind of the foundation to bushcraft in his opinion and I certainly agree. Now this isn't a budget list, but it is a budget conscious list. I want you to think about things that you can use for a long time. So I'm trying to combine cost with high quality, and this is what I came up with. I think the best place to start is with cutting and look no further than the company Mora Amora Knife. These knives are inexpensive relatively. They're really durable. They have excellent edge retention. They almost exclusively have Scandinavian grinds, which I think are the easiest to maintain and sharpen for a beginner who's just getting into knives. This is my budget choice. It's the companion heavy duty. Got a 4.1 inch high carbon steel blade. It weighs about 4.8 ounces and it has a very nice and thick 0.125 inch uh, blade. You will have to grind a 90 degree edge into this if you want to strike a ferro rod with it. Cost is about 16 or 17 dollars. Comes with this plastic, very nice sheath. It doesn't look like much but they work perfectly well. If you want to step it up just a little bit and spend a little more money, I would recommend the Cans Bull, this is a stainless steel, Sandvik stainless steel blade, 4.3 inch blade, weighs 4.7 ounces, the thickness is 2.5 millimeters, just a little bit narrower than the heavy duty. Cost is $33, but you're getting a lot more knife for that. Uh, still a very reasonably priced knife. Also a Scandinavian grind, and the fact that it's stainless steel makes it just easier to take care of. It does also come with a 90 degree spine already uh, ground in, so that's a convenience. Looking for cutting? Look no further than more knives. Now there are tons of containers out there. My choice is the Pathfinder School bottle and nesting cup. This is stainless steel. It comes with this 32 ounce wide mouth, essentially Nalgene. It's 8 by 3.75. It weighs 8.1 ounces and it also comes with this cup. It's a 25 ounce cup. has these wing handles on it, which are very convenient. It's four and a half by three and three quarter inches. It weighs 7.1 ounces with the lid. The lid has draining holes on top. It also has these little side holes here that you can use a fish mouth spreader to hang it over, say, an open fire, which is very, very convenient. It costs $40 for both of these. It's robust, it's affordable, it's flexible. I think the perfect beginner bushcraft container set is this right here. There are lots of options as far as covers go. You're not going to see a lot of these because they're just in the bags, but I have videos on these particular tarps. You want something that is uh, super waterproof, and I wouldn't look any further than a simple uh, waterproof nylon tarp. These are the two that I have that I use mainly. This is my original 10x7 by Bushcraft Outfitters, and this is my newer AquaQuest 10x10. These two sizes will give you tons of options as far as what type of shelter you build. I do recommend a 10 by 10 if you're going to get one, I think it gives you the best options. I used the 10 by 7 for years and thought it was okay until I got the 10 by 10 and it really made a huge difference. The AquaQuest is a great brand, it's going to cost you $60, $80, maybe $100, it all depends on how thick and how heavy you want it. I chose a particular tarp from AquaQuest that's lighter weight. Of course, it's going to be a little more vulnerable to wear. You just have to be very careful with it. You also want to look for tarps with a lot of robust tie-out points so you can make all the shelters you want and just basically get it as lightweight as you're comfortable with. From the standpoint of combustion, I think first and foremost, 
this is the one area where I would recommend two particular options. You want two options when it comes to fire. I always carry a big lighter. I think it's almost impossible to go out into the woods without a big. It's so convenient. It's cheap, it's dependable, it's very easy to find almost anywhere. There's really no reason not to carry a big lighter and I use it as my backup basically to this primary fire source. I love using ferro rods. I've had luck with several different brands. These are from Nathan4071 on eBay. You can also look at firesteel.com. These are a couple of kind of commercially available ones. Uh, Ultimate Survival Technologies. This is a Zippo one, which is actually pretty decent, but I would definitely stick to more of a cottage company if you really want one that works extremely well. Lots of different strikers. You can carry your own striker like this. I usually just use my knife as a striker, but you can do it whichever way you want. Ferro rod will last you a long time. You'll get hundreds of fires out of one ferro rod. I use it as my primary source because it's I have tons of use of it. I don't want to use any resources that I don't need in case I do get into a survival type situation. The BIC is always going to be the best backup plan. Uh, it's super easy, super fast. You don't have to mess with it. If you're cold, if you're wet, you can use that BIC if time is of the essence. Otherwise, get yourself a good ferro rod, wherever it might be. Cost will be anywhere, but 10, 15, 20 bucks for a good one. Again, hundreds of fires from this one ferro rod well worth the money. Last, we're gonna talk about cordage. I see two major options. You've got paracord and you've got bank line, which is also known as tarred twine. There's a company here in Louisiana, Catahoula, that makes very good tarred twine, and that's the one that I tend to get. You use stuff like this to hang things, build things, lash things together. It really helps tremendously when you're building stuff not to have to make your own cordage. I've never done it, and it looks extremely hard to do, and you also have to be in a forest that has the appropriate um, things you need to gather to be able to do it. I would personally favor paracord over bank line for beginners. I think it's easier to tie and learn knots with. It's more forgiving as far as its holding power, I think, than bank line. And I just think overall, it's a better option if you're a beginner. But do not shy away from the bank line because it's a lot cheaper and to a large extent lighter. That's one of the things about paracord is that it's heavier, more expensive, so you have to choose what you want. There are tons of good paracord suppliers on the internet, so just search around, get a variety of colors. Always have some orange on hand, put orange paracord on every single one of your tools to make sure you don't lose them on the ground and you don't leave them behind. But these are my two main options, and really I think most people's two main options for beginning bushcraft or bushcraft at all as far as cordage goes. I'm by no means an expert bushcrafter, but I know my way around gear and I know my way around the woods pretty decently and I'm always trying to add to my knowledge base. As I said, this is gear to get you started. You can certainly buy cheaper gear. There's much cheaper gear out there, but I'm trying to give you things that I have used that I can vouch for and say, look, if you're looking for good quality gear at a good price, this is what I recommend. This gear is tested, it's affordable, it's easy to find, and it really will get you through any situation you put it through. I am certain you guys will have plenty of opinions on the gear that I chose and gear that you would choose, and I would love for you to put it down in the comments below. A lot of my subscribers have way more experience and knowledge out in the woods than I do, so I would love some input down below, as long as, of course, it's respectful input. Now we're gonna have our sour grapes type comments. We, we welcome those as well, I guess. And we may make a mean comments video down the road. So keep them coming, it'll be entertaining. If you're interested in more videos about beginning bushcraft, I can certainly do that. I also have a full budget bushcraft playlist. I'll put a link down below. I go through all the different things, actually the 10 C's of bushcraft, which expands it out even more, and allows you to look at budget options if you're looking at getting into the outdoors and into bushcraft. If you like the video, guys, I ask you to stop right now. Hit that thumbs up down below. Really helps spread things across YouTube. Very helpful to my channel. If you want to make sure you don't miss any videos, hit the subscription button. And if you want to be notified every time I release a new video, hit the ding dong bell. It's starting to cool off here in Louisiana. It's nice. I've got a couple of trips planned coming up uh, overnight, as well as just a trip to shoot a bunch of videos, which will be a lot of fun. As always, guys, I appreciate you checking out the Paleo Hiker MD channel. Stay tuned for more videos soon.